Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how I made this Celtic ram head. So I've started with just using my Cricut. Uh, it's a Cricut maker with a deep cut blade and a strong grip mat. I'm cutting out on two millimeter Silly Winks foam. Uh, I would have preferred to have used a higher quality close cell foam like um, TNT Cosplay or uh, SKS Props' uh, HD foam, but this is what I had. After it's all cut out, um, I just peel it off, which is honestly really fun. <laughs> um, I'm using an older blade in my Cricut, so it's not making perfectly clean cuts anymore, but I've cut quite a bit. Like, I've been cutting with that blade for six months. It's about time for a fresh one anyhow. More peeling because it is fun. And again, there, there's nothing that um, can't be just either, you know, hand uh, weeded or, you know, kind of tidied up. So, especially on those little blades. Can you imagine how long that would take just cutting out with a craft knife? Drive me crazy. Uh, sharpening up said craft knife. I'm actually going through now using one of Kamui Cosplay's ram horn patterns on some uh, six millimeter TNT cosplay foam which I really like. It's good stuff. I've used a silver sharpie to mark all the lines and everything. That's definitely a, a place that you don't want to skimp the effort. And I've got a bin that I just put all of my scrap pieces of foam into uh, underneath my foam cutting station that I've got going on over here. Just slice. If I can do it all in one smooth clean cut, I will try my best to do that. So I've gone through and I've cut everything out and now we're using the uh, amazing technology of editing to speed it up a bit. And I, you can see it makes it shiny when the heat hits it. I'm using just like a $15 heat gun from like Lowe's um, to not just close all of those uh, cells of the foam, but to um, make it much more malleable. And I'm just going through and hand shaping. Now there are links down in the video description to all the different tools and materials that I'm using um, to kind of get you started shopping on your own. But yeah, I just, while it's nice and warm, I go ahead and shape it. You can see it makes a very slight, but pretty big difference actually. Go through, do that to everybody, all the different pieces. Uh, I was doing a lot of uh, sets of foam horns, so to delineate, or determine which horns go with which. I was putting like Roman numerals on them. So here I'm going through with um, barge cement from Tandy Leather. Uh, it's a rubber like contact cement uh, in an applicator bottle. And I'm not <laughs> very good at this. Uh, there's folks out there that it, they're just amazing at like being very, very tidy and neat and concise about their seams. Uh, I'm still working on that a lot. I need a lot more practice. <laughs> but I'm just going through and I'm going ahead and doing all of the edges of all of the different pieces to start with. Um, I like to start lining up at the tips of the horns. Um, here I haven't quite waited long enough for the contact cement to set up. So it's sticking to my hands. It's like kind of goopy still. And especially whenever you're trying to line up the notches, like how I am here, and it puts it under tension, if it's not set up enough, if the, the cement isn't, then it'll just kind of slide around. Whereas here, I've waited just a little bit longer, like, you know, another minute or two, um, and it's sticking where I'm putting it, which that's what I need. And I always, I always try too soon, but, um, you know, uh, so for future me's reference and for all y'all doing this at home, uh, if you think you've waited long enough, wait like 30 more seconds um, if you're impatient like how I am. Going through doing my best to line up, uh, I want the foam to all be on the same plane because the tidier we do our seams and stuff now, the less cleanup work we're going to have to do. Now I'm very bad at doing nice clean seams, so I plan on doing cleanup, but the easier we can make it on ourselves, the better, right? Uh, I, I, like I said, I, I do like to start at the tip and then work my way down to the base because at the tip, that's where I, it's very important to me that everything's like lined up nicely. Whereas down at the base, it's a lot easier uh, to just kind of slice off any extra. Oftentimes I have the bases of the horns hidden in like wigs or the rest of a headdress or there'll be like silk floral or, or uh, other thermoplastics or something around it. So it's much easier to... Uh, 
to disguise a messy base than it is to disguise a messy tip. So I'm getting a little bit of like rippling and stuff here. Just, I don't know. I'm not very good at this, <laughs> honestly. Um, but if I can do it, y'all can do it for sure. So we've got this, guys. <clears throat> it also gets a lot easier to join the pieces together when you can fit your hand inside. Uh, so there's one horn. And while those are finishing setting up the rest of the way, I'm going through in super duper hyperlapse fast speed and just uh, heating up some uh, TerraFlex. It's like Warbla, but from Tandy Leather. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'm just heating it and shaping it to this uh, like goat skull home decor base. Um, again, links for that are down in the video description below. And I like it because I the thermoplastic has the adhesive like in it, like it is its own adhesive. So it sticks to some things really, really well. It does not stick to the skull base very well, actually, which is why I like using that as a base. But we can take our little foam cutouts, just hit it with the heat gun, and then smush that right on in there. No gluing, no anything necessary. It works out like perfect like I love it and so I'm experimenting just a little bit with different placements I cut out way more of these Celtic knots than what I ended up needing um and it's perfectly okay too to go through and make some modifications to it Ooh, I like this better and you know you, you don't know till you're in there doing the crafting you know so this was a lot of fun though like I think I think I'm gonna have to make a lot more uh, pieces like this one with different like knot work and sigils and runes and things and I really love the uh, <clears throat> like tribal archaic imagery of it like there's a whole aesthetic to it that I just find very very nifty <clears throat> excuse me oh goodness but yeah and then as the thermoplastic uh, cools down you just heat it right back up and place your stuff where you want it I found this little uh, bobble that I had made with resin and uh like uh, Prolex powders. This is actually a black diamond pigment um, was the brand uh, of pigment, but I really liked it. So I just kind of smushed it on there and used some scrap pieces of thermoplastic um, to adhere to the base. I found that glass doesn't adhere particularly well with like um, hot glue or thermoplastic, but oh my gosh, resin works fantastically for that like you can sandpaper up the back a little bit and everything too so uh i've let it harden up i've let the thermoplastic harden up a little bit and now i'm just i didn't even use any like oil or uh repel or anything this is just popping right off of that plastic base Oop, just like that and that makes pretty happy you gotta you really do want to let it set up all the way first there so <laughs> oh no out of makeup i don't even have my eyebrows on um but <laughs> uh, this is intended to be worn as a headdress and I have like a honkin' noggin like it's big y'all uh, and so I'm just going through with the heat gun and heating up just the points that I need to reshape um, if I had had my head form out I would have done this on that instead of using my actual head because thermoplastic you wouldn't think this but once you've hit it with the heat gun that gets pretty hot uh, but I'm just gonna use my big old head anyways uh, so pushing it down it didn't stick to my hair thank goodness I didn't think of that until after the fact um, but yeah and just let it cool enough that it reshapes and that changed it to where it's no longer pushing in on my temples now I lost the footage uh, of putting the uh, gesso it's g-e-s-s-o I've been, I've heard it pronounced both ways. I like saying it gesso just because it makes sense to me. Um, but I, I used like just white acrylic gesso to, um, to fill in all my cracks. And then once it's completely dry, I'm doing just some hand sanding. You could go through with a Dremel and do that, but, um, I had, I had a good old time just with the hand sanding. Using some more scrap pieces of thermoplastic to kind of cram up inside the horn. Uh, to adhere it, sticking both to the inside of the horn and the inside of the skull. I like to use the seams on the horns to line up with the corners of the Celtic knotwork because um, y your eyes will kind of follow that and it'll, I don't know, I think it affects the symmetry of it when it's all said and done. Um, and they're just a little reference points. Like none of this is going to be perfect. Like I've just kind of accepted that for myself that uh, 
I'm not, <laughs> I, I don't aim for perfect because I know I'm going to fall short, but I do try my best. And so just getting that thermoplastic up in there, this is the hardest part is for me is getting these symmetrical and then having to wait for it to cool completely because otherwise they'll just keep sagging out of symmetry. Um, yeah. <laughs> so while that's cooling, I'm cutting just some more, uh, like five millimeter, I think this was some Silly Winks foam, um, just some little straight strips of it and cutting and heating up some strips of thermoplastic and then wrapping that around the foam. And this uses a lot less thermoplastic than if I were to just make a, like a roll out a snake of the thermoplastic. And it helps keep a much cleaner, smoother, even finish, I think. So just rolling it out on the table like a barbarian. Um, and then I'm going to use that to blend out the base of the horn. So just kind of smushing that around, shaping it. I feel like it worked out pretty well. Like I, I 10 out of 10 would craft again. <laughs> So just again, while it's warm, just kind of like smushing and everything. Again, one of the hardest parts for me with working with thermoplastic is waiting for it to cool down. Uh, so now I'm coming through with um, just some neat, some pins, you know, from sewing and the Celtic knot cutouts. And I'm positioning them to kind of drafting out how I would like the knot work on the horns to be. Now I am experimenting with like cutting out here and there being like, oh, maybe that little piece doesn't need to be there. Um, but just, just pinning all the way. And I actually think in the future, if I could find some like half inch pins, um, instead of gluing these on, I may just like nail them on to the foam core with the pins. Um, but this time I didn't do that. So I'm coming through now with some white, uh, primer, craft foam primer. Um, and just spraying very lightly, almost using the Celtic knot cutouts as like a stencil. Because the next step in what we're going to do, um, and I only did like one layer of that, but the next step is going to be to remove the pins and in the lines that are left black, uh, using that as a guide to put down the glue um and y'all this applicator bottle makes this job so much easier i used to muck about doing this with just like the you know janky brush that comes in the lid of the can of the contact cement um the applicator makes a huge difference and i've also found that um you, I was in some cases I would use the pin to rehold the stubborn parts if like it, the barge cement wasn't completely set up yet. But it also it worked out perfectly okay to do, uh, before it's completely tacked up, just go in and kind of smush that on there because it lets you wiggle a bit if um if it's not like perfectly lined up. But uh, and also the overlap like sometimes or the overflow rather of the uh, barge cement. Uh, painted ended up painting over perfectly fine. I was really worried that being a messy crafter that it would be horrible uh, But it wasn't it was not as nearly as bad as I thought it would be so now I'm going through with more Gesso I guess I don't know words are so hard you guys um, <laughs> So I I'm not picky if y'all aren't um, but yeah, I am globbing that on there making a big old mess on my table because I'm a Neanderthal and can't figure out how to use a drop cloth. Um, but I uh, just covered the whole thing uh, in a nice layer of gesso. Um, and now, after that's completely dried, uh, I, again, lost some of the footage. I really need to get better at this, um, of doing the first layers of Plasti Dip. But I was going through with very, very thin layers because I didn't want lots of, like, drips or anything. Um... And just trying to catch every different angle. Going back, if I had known that I was going to do this in black, I would have... Is there black gesso? Gesso on the market? I don't know. That would have been nice. Um, that way I wouldn't have to have worried so much about getting like all the little nooks and crannies uh, with the Plasti Dip. Um, so that was probably an unnecessary extra step. But now I'm just going through and dry brushing with some Folk Art um, Color Shift. Really love this stuff. Uh, it doesn't always come out uh, true to color whenever you're dry brushing it onto a base color. 
Um, but for my purposes, I knew exactly, like, I had tested it on a little piece of scrap and was very pleased with it. And now I'm coming through with, like, some off-brand Rub and Buff. Like, it's not Rub and Buff brand, but it's the same thing. Um, just with my finger, because I found that that was much easier than trying to paint, um, with a paintbrush and, like, a runny paint that, like, I kept leaving strokes in. This Rub and Buff really did the trick for me. Um, it was very easy to just hit the high portions of the knot work. And so again, just going through on all those high spots, it was pretty time intensive, I'm not going to lie, like all of this was, but totally worth it. And now I'm coming through with a stiff bristle brush and just some plain matte black like acrylic paint um, and antiquing, giving a little bit of weathering around the edges of the um, knot work. And again, part of this I was doing for like the artistic, like give it a little bit more depth, put, you know, because whenever you put in effort into your pieces, it shows. Um, and the magic happens in the details, it really does. But in addition to all that magic happening in the details, I was just double triple making sure that all of the little white um, parts that didn't get covered by plastic dip, that there wasn't anything that looked like uh, it wasn't supposed to be there. And then I started going through, not on all the knot work, like all the way around the horns, but like on the front focal ones, um, I started adding just a little bit of like, to make it look like they were actually interwoven instead of just being sitting like right next to each other. If I had used a thicker foam for this, I could have gone through and like with a Dremel and shaped, that would have been pretty cool. But honestly, I think uh, just doing it with the black paint worked out, it worked out all right. I don't I don't know if anybody will notice but I noticed and I liked it so and it's perfectly okay by the way for you to do art just for you it doesn't have to be for somebody else's viewing pleasure for you know to be like oh well I want to make this for like a competition it's like th this was a piece that I just wanted to do just for me though I am going to be selling it at my booth at Dragon Kong so I was like oh this is cool I can probably <laughs> sell it <laughs> um again do as I say not as I do uh but yeah just going through I took off the masking tape that I had put on to protect the bauble and I'm doing just a little bit of antiquing which you know if you could see through my hand I'm doing it I promise <laughs> uh and that's about that y'all I started going through touching up just a little bit and um that's how it came out I ended up uh applying some different like silk floral in things um, but, yeah, you don't got to, you don't have to do that. Um, and, uh, I just used, like, a foam strap with some elastic to attach it to my noggin. If you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below in the comment section. Uh, there's links to everything, like I had mentioned, down in the video description, as well as all my different social media, our Discord channel, where you can post pictures of the stuff that you make, as well as my Craft Along Club over on Patreon, where... For as little as a dollar a month, you can get all sorts of exclusive behind the scene pictures and sneaky peekies of new tutorials, as well as our digital download content and templates. And, um, oh, yeah, the, uh, the Craft Along Club, like, craft kits. <laughs> so, yeah, um, anyways, thanks y'all so much for watching, and until next time, happy crafting. Mm -hmm. Bye! <laughs>